I love music. I live my memories. I actually live them when I hear a certain song, like I could take my hand and feel it, but I can feel it in my body. Growing up as a teenager, music used to affect me very emotionally. I can remember specific tunes, where I was. They, they go ahead and play it, and you listen to it, and you think, gee, I haven't heard this for a long, long time, and it makes you feel good. Doing musical activities needs to be constant all through the day. There's no one way that music decreases isolation and loneliness. There is different creative ways that music can be used to infuse someone's life with meaning and purpose, which ultimately decreases isolation and loneliness. Come on in. Come on in, let's get you a chair. Thank you everyone for being here today. We so very much appreciate your time. We are going to change lives here using music. Room 217 is a social enterprise dedicated to infusing music into healthcare settings. So there's many different ways that Room 217 assists in this process. The first way is through education. We have music care training, which is accessible for all types of caregivers and teaches them how to use music in their practice. We also provide caregivers with resources that make it really easy for anyone to incorporate music into different healthcare settings. We conduct research to collect evidence showing that music does make a difference. What we're really interested in is in changing the care experience for people, improving quality of life, and helping people to engage socially using music. We'd like to see music care be a standard of care in Canada. So the Partners Program is our big major research project that we're working on right now. We're trying to show that we can help communities use music across all of the different scopes of care that they provide. For our Ontario Trillium Foundation Grow Grant, we need to be in three different catchment areas. And our catchment areas in which we're recruiting 24 long-term care homes to participate in our partners program are Hamilton, Toronto, and Kitchener-Waterloo. So we did our first cycle, our first iteration of Partners Grow here in Hamilton. So the Music Care Partners, why I love it so much is it's creating this, this operational process, really a sustainable model for integrating music not only into the care culture and into the community of care, but into people's personal care plans. We're looking at reducing isolation and loneliness in long-term care. I think a lot of people think that they need to be musical in order to use music, and especially healthcare providers. Every single person is innately musical. We're trying to educate people and show them that they can use music even if they're not professional musicians. Before we even start our first site team meeting, I have a meeting with the individual who's going to be the site team leader. And at that time, it's really important for me to share with the individual that this is going to be a lot of work. Once everyone is on board with, with running the program, we get our date set for our first site team meeting. Music has existed in every single culture that we have ever discovered on Earth. And until recently, music has been intimately linked to health and wellness and family and living and being. So one of our goals through this program is to re-enhance that connection. Site Team Meeting One is the first opportunity that I have as a facilitator to meet the site team. In that moment, we're introducing them to the concept 
of Music Care, we begin to talk about the process of developing a Music Care initiative for that particular home. We kind of try to build up this warm, fuzzy feeling about the team and the possibilities of this initiative that they're going to be developing. After site team meeting one, all of our homes have music care training. So that's the two day, 14 hour certification program where members of the home come together to learn about different ways that they can use music specifically in their home in their long term care context. As we're beginning this journey of using music more intentionally in care, one of the you know, first ideas we might have is like, oh, I'm going to try and talk to the residents and find out what their favorite songs are. And that question can stump people. Yet when we ask, what is a song that's been significant to you? That invites so much more possibility for conversation, connection, for specificity, uh, for depth. We got the opportunity to write a couple songs for our home, which I was a little bit skeptical that we'd be able to do, and it was like very easy, and now we're really trying to integrate those two songs into everyday life at Queen's Garden. Well, I learned about how in the morning, I don't put on like really excitable music, I kind of put on more soothing music, and I find that that helps keep the overall environment very calm. Before, you know, I'd put on like Elvis and rock and roll, and then I'm wondering, why are all these people so wild, right? But it's, the music really affects and the tone of the music. Site team meeting two is where the dreaming and the planning begins. It's where we invite the site team to come up with their most abstract, coolest, unique ideas about how they could use music in their home to address isolation or loneliness. The one that seemed to resonate most with people is to have a jar and have popsicle sticks inside with different musical activities or tasks you could do with a resident. So anyone at any point in their shift can come in and pick something out of the jar with the task on it. That's that great. one that we so really liked. Site team meeting three is where we get into the nitty gritty details. You want to run a variety show. How are we actually going to make that happen? What are the, what are the tangible steps that we have to go through to make this music care initiative come to fruition? And after our planning meeting, site team meeting three, our facilitator might need to meet with the site team leader a few times just to get everything in the works and ready to go. But then we actually implement the plan for a period of eight weeks. The site team and their long-term care home, they run their music care initiative. So our project was a bell choir. We wanted something that was very tangible. We ended up having double the amount of residents we initially thought we might. Uh, when we're playing our bells, we want to make sure that we're holding it like a little candlestick. The residents at Queen's Garden were very musical. There was lots of smiles and there was lots of laughs, but I, I think one of my favorite things are like the serious ones where we're having fun in a bell choir, but someone might be like really seriously like, I'm gonna hit this part, this is my spot, like this is my bell. And that's something I found really cool, it's something I could see in the residents. Um, some of that sense of purpose really come out. Well, playing it, I've become very focused because I want to get my, you know, on cue. I, I, keep, I keep threatening that I'm gonna order some kazoos. I love to be in music. Those bells you have to, to make them ring. I know which note is gonna come after a note by my ear. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So that's why I, I want to be there. I can sit there and listen to music and I can make my own story. I like the bell choir, but I, I like to move a little faster than they do.
So the project that we created was two jars and in each jar we would have tongue depressors with activities on it. So every day we would go and we'd pick out an activity and you would go and do that with a resident. We have a very large population with dementia here. A lot of people who are very stationary, you see them tapping their toes and snapping their fingers. People who have lost the ability to put their sentences together and have aphasia. You see them singing along, people that you didn't realize still could engage in that way. Absolutely wonderful to see the people who have trouble walking or they have a shuffling gait get up and really shake it. Like they're in it, their hips are moving and you just never see more smiles on the residents' faces than when you're doing something with music. Somebody will ask me to dance, I'll dance, and they'll say to me, gee, you know how to dance, don't you? <laughs> and I think to myself, well, why shouldn't I know how to dance? <laughs> Victoria Gardens in Hamilton chose a music care initiative that was focused on singing. So they composed a set of three songs where they took existing melodies that they were all familiar and comfortable with and they rewrote the lyrics to address some of the tendencies or behaviors. They had three behaviors that they were targeting. One was um, anxiousness, one was exit seeking, and the other was uh, staying in your room, so, so isolating. Well, I was, I was an entertainer and I came in here to, to be with her and to help her. We were involved with this and I thought it was a tremendous um, project and uh, I, I was amazed at all of the, the progress they made. And one of the tunes that they did was Amazing Grace and that's Delina's favorite tune. Quite often she hums it. Yeah, yeah she it brought she, back good memories and maybe some sad memories too. Yeah, yeah, yeah hope. Yeah, that's, and that's sometimes that's what music does. It's very emotional to her yeah, music. It's very, yeah. Yeah. So the Macasa Lodge initiative was called Music Casa, and they wanted to have spontaneous musical moments throughout the day for their residents. They decorated the hallways so they, as you walk down the hall, you'd see song lyrics and questions that would prompt residents to think about musical memories. For example, what song did you dance to at their wedding? You'd just be walking through the hall and you'd see that question. You would see residents stopping and reading these questions on their own. And to me, that was them doing their own kind of music care moment for themselves, which I thought was really cool. After the two months, we get ready for Site Team Meeting 4. And it is a lot to get ready for Site Team Meeting 4 because we have to actually analyze all of the home's data, both qualitative and quantitative, because our job is to present, objectively speaking, the results that happened through the two months. Within Hamilton, we've noticed that a lot of the sites have seen really dramatic decreases in, in social isolation and loneliness. We're able to see decreases in behavioral issues, increases in cognition, which is always really exciting, as well as increase in social engagement throughout this entire process, and even decreases in depression scores. We also see residents come in and um, ask about when initiatives are going to happen because they're so excited about it. Our final site team meeting is really a celebration. We often love to invite families and other key community members to really spread the word and celebrate what, what has happened through partners. Welcome all of you and it's so nice to see so many new residents who are supporting this music initiative. We're going to start with our welcome song, which we wrote hoping that it will be something we use as each new resident moves in, that we can sing it to them to make them feel welcome. So now, Dawn, we're going to sing it to you because you're new, and Basil, you're new, so we'll sing it to you as well. So 
I have a few things to give to you at this point. So we brought you a really nice poster with you. Oh. So you guys, as a community, have done this whole initiative, and you get to pick where you go next. We've walked you through the process once, and now you have the skills and the tools to do it again, if you like. So you can go back to explore and think about another community challenge that you could address through music and follow Kazoo. the same process. Kazoos! <laughs> there you go! <laughs> I want to say that this has been a great pleasure in my life because right now I'm in an old life and I like something that's nice and cheery. I thank you all for coming out and I hope you come out to all the practices and learn what you can because I don't have much more time left. <laughs> but thank you very much. We share with the home that we, we have created all of the tools that you need to redo this entire process without us. And that, I think, is the most powerful thing about partners. We are setting up a home to iterate the process of thinking through how can we use music in a meaningful way to address a problem, to take on another challenge, such as depression, such as resident falls, through music because they now have the baseline knowledge they need and they have a process by which they can do that. Not everybody inherently has these musical tools. Not every home has a music therapist or a recreation therapist that's super comfortable with music. That shouldn't mean that those residents don't have something that can be so beneficial as music in their care. It's a wonderful way to reach many people all at the same time or to overcome some of those very specific resident barriers. Just because people get old doesn't mean that they stop liking music. I hope that when I'm 80, I'll still love Nicki Minaj and I'll be in my room 80 rapping. Like, I think that'd be amazing. Music can actually help make neural connections and make new neural connections. Music can help rehabilitate. Music can help reconnect.